Welcome back to Uncommon Sense. For those of you that are just tuning in, we've been exploring the benefits of meditation in treating students with ADHD. Let's hear what the students themselves had to say about their symptoms both before and after learning meditation. Well, when I get frustrated, I get overly frustrated sometimes. When I can't do my work, I shut down too easily, and I sometimes just have problems overall working and um, just keeping my anger under control. I can't all like, sit straight, like sit there for a while and not fidget, and I can't concentrate for a long time, like, I, and I can get distracted easily. It's been found that children with ADD have abnormally high levels of what are known as theta brainwaves. The brain functions as an electrochemical organ. This electrical activity is represented in the form of brainwaves, meaning every experience you have creates a cascade or wave of electrical activity over your brain, traveling from front to back, side to side. When a non-ADD brain is stimulated and involved in mental activities, it creates alpha or beta brain waves that are relatively low in amplitude. But the ADD brain creates an unusually high amount of theta brain waves. This particular type of brain wave is very high in amplitude. So high it has the effect of drowning out everything else. So any information coming in doesn't get processed. The problem is, this high amplitude theta brain wave blocks out relative information as well. This is the attention deficit part of ADHD. Their attention deficit, they don't attend to things because the information doesn't get in. And we found with these ADHD children, just with just three months TM practice, the brain began to communicate with itself the way we would expect it to. And that's because the frontal area is the CEO of the brain, which actually puts other parts of the brain together, was more active. It's kind of easier for me to focus and concentrate my energy on one thing than like going and be trying to work on one thing and then fidgeting and trying to stop that and then listen to the teacher at the same time. It's helped me with my schoolwork, not getting as frustrated with my friends, and just not getting so angry with my parents, doing my homework better, not getting into so much fights at school, not getting people angry and stuff like that. It makes me a lot more confident in myself because then I know that if I can't get one, like a few things, I don't need to get stressed out about it. I just need to take a little time, go to something else and then come back to it and work on it. So this is actually where we look for benefits through meditation. We don't look at their meditation, I think they're going to become a better meditator. We look for what are the benefits in activity, how you see, how you think, how you interact with the world. But I would caution, TM is not a magic bullet. It's not as though the person will sit, meditate once, and their ADHD is, is gone. It is a developmental trajectory. That's what our life is. And everything we do, we say, we think, is reflecting on our developmental trajectory. The main point is you are in control of your destiny. Your brain is a river and not a rock. It's constantly changing with each experience. With each experience, you're strengthening those brain circuits that allow you to be successful in that area. If you have ADHD, it's okay. You're, you're developing, you're growing. Put your attention on those experiences which develop those executive circuits and you can be the person you want to be.